question I'm asking today is how bad do you want it? How bad do you want breakthrough? How bad do you want change in your life and in your family? How bad do you want the next level? See, a lot of us, we can see ourselves going to another level, envision ourselves maybe beyond where we're at today, but the only way we're gonna get there is if you want it badly enough. So we can't get to that next level until we're desperate enough to change something. If you do this, if we continue to do the same things, we get the same results. And the sad thing is that people want change but are not willing to do anything different. When are we gonna wake up and finally smell the coffee and say, it's, if I want change, it's time for me to do something different? The question I have for you is, how badly do you want that change in your life? The title of today's message is, how bad do you want it? Ask somebody next to you, how bad do you want it? Look at the person next to you and say, oh, I want it bad. Oh yeah, he wanted it really bad over there. See, we're going to talk about, we're going to understand what it looks like to be ready to get in position for a breakthrough. Did you know that there are people that are in, that are around breakthrough, that are so close to breakthrough, they can see movements happening, but they're not in it. There's a difference between being around it and actually being in it. There's a difference between hearing about it and telling somebody about it. There's a difference between uh, someone telling you how it went or you actually receiving all that this has for you. The question I have for you is, if you want change, are you willing to put in the work and the investment to see that change in your life? How bad do you want it? Today we're gonna look at three people, well two people in scripture that wanted it so badly for themselves. And we're gonna look at somebody that wanted it so badly for somebody that they love. Let's go to the first one, the first fact, and the first story we're gonna look at. Fact number one, big impartation requires big investment. Big impartation requires big investment. If I wanna receive something big, if I wanna receive something at the next level, it's gonna cost me investing something big. We don't just get freebies around here. We don't just get free handouts. How many have heard that saying? Or your parents have said it. Maybe you said it to your kids. Money doesn't grow on trees. Because kids think that for some reason our bank account is infinity. But if we're going to see big investment, if we're going to receive big impartation, if we're going to receive a big return, it requires a big investment. If you're a trader, if you trade in stocks, you know this, that the proportion of your investment will determine how much return that you get. And a lot of times, we're not willing to give big investments because, uh, we're, because we're afraid or we're scared. But uh, my question to you is, do you want it bad enough that all those fears and all the worries and all the doubts of can I go to the next level? Can I become the leader that they call me to be? Can I see change in my life? If, uh, if, or do you want it badly enough that you're willing to put aside all the naysayers that say you can't do it? Who do you think you are? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want to see change in your life? Let's look at this story. This is somebody who wanted it so bad, they were willing to invest everything. Mark chapter five, starting from verse 25, says a woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors. And over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them, everything she had. You're talking about a woman who invested every penny to her name so that she can see some breakthrough in her life. That's how bad she wanted this. She was a wealthy woman. She had family, I'm sure. 
But because of the religious laws at this time, she was considered unclean. So she lost everything. All her money gone. Her ability to be around people gone. Even if someone touched her, they would be considered unclean. She lost all social life, all social status, all ability to do anything in, in the general public. She just, she couldn't function or live. She lost everything. And, was, and she wanted it so bad that she was willing to invest everything to see some change. Nothing was working for her. Nothing changed. Scripture goes on to say, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. I wonder if you feel like that. I wonder if you feel like you've been trying and you've been pushing and when you think that things should be starting to get better, things are starting to look a little bit worse. I just started coming back to church. How come it seems like hell is breaking loose all of a sudden? I just, I just started getting my life together, and all of a sudden, things starting to break out, and things are starting to go in the opposite direction. I thought things were going to change immediately. That's what I like to tell myself when I go to the gym. I go one time, and I'm running to the scale. Like, I can't wait to see what this says. What? And then I gained two pounds. Like, how did that happen? I just sweated so much. We know that it doesn't happen that way. And this woman was investing everything and it took time, but because of her persistence and because she was so desperate and because she so badly wanted it, she was gonna stop at absolutely nothing to make sure she saw breakthrough in her life. I wonder how many of us stop right at the breaking point. How sad would it be if right at the breaking point, God had a breakthrough for you and you said, nah, I've tried one too many services. I've been to one too many events. I've been to one too many things. I, I don't think this thing is going to work for me. And you stop right before your breakthrough. How sad would that be? If it just took one more attempt, one more try, get up one more time, hit the, hit him, hit the devil one more time, go back to church one more time. Just imagine if one more time was the breakthrough you needed for you or your family. How bad do you want it? She wanted it badly, so she got word. She heard about Jesus. She heard he was coming through town. So when she heard about him, it says she came up behind him through the crowd, the Bible says, and touched his robe. Through the crowd, through the noise, through the haters, through the naysayers through the people that persecute you for coming to church, through the, through the people that put you down when you start becoming on fire, disciple of Jesus, now all of a sudden people have a problem with you. Through those that tell you you can't do it, through those that tell you you're never gonna change, through all the people that say you're, too, you're not clean enough, you can't go to God, you've messed up one too many times, you're way too filthy to be in God's presence or to be in church or to be watching online. Through all the naysayers, through the crowd, through the obstacle, through the opposition, she went through the crowd, through everybody to touch his robe. How bad did she want it? She wanted it bad. How bad do we want it? Are you willing to press through every obstacle to get to what God has for you? See, the breakthrough doesn't, see, our salvation came with a high price. And Jesus bought that price for us. And we're saved because of faith in Christ. But your next level, your next level of leadership, your next level of, of disciple making, your next level of building your organization, of leading your family, of leading your, your, your businesses, that's going to take some fight from you. It's not going to be handed to you. It's not going to be given to you on a silver platter. As a matter of fact, it's going to come in the form of a storm. It's going to come in the form of, of a weapon. It's going to come in the form of opposition. It's going to come in the form of a fight against you. And what God is saying is, I need to toughen you up. I need to get you through some things so that you can handle the next level. But the question is, how badly do you want the next level? 
you got to be willing to invest big to see big in your life. If you don't want to invest anything, then don't get ready. Don't, don't expect anything. That's okay. But if you're ready to see something big, get ready to invest big. What God is saying is just give me everything and it's more than enough for me. You don't got to try and go give me more than you got. Just give me who you are. Give me what you got. Give me what little you think you have. And I can turn that five loaves and two fish and feed 5,000 people. You watch what I can do in and through your life. God can do it. Someone say God can do it. She heard about Jesus. She came up behind him, threw the crowd, and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. If I can just touch his robe, I'll be healed. If I can just touch his robe, I'll be healed. If I can just touch him, if I can just touch him. You know, sometimes all we can stand on is just one mustard seed of faith. To believe in the promise that God has given you. God has given us promises. He's giving you promises. And today he's giving you a promise. There's more for you. The Bible says, I know your future. The Bible says, I know the plans for your life. God says this, you are the head and not the tail. God says, my thoughts for you are higher than your thoughts. God says that my ways are greater than your ways. God says, you can, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. How many more promises can God give us? All we need is one. All I need is one word just to get me through. I just need one word and I'll repeat it over and over. If I could just touch his robe, if I could just get to him, if I could just come close in his presence, I will see a breakthrough in my life. We need somebody in here this morning. I know it's 9 a.m. and I'm shouting, but it's Sunday, and we need a change this morning. I know I need this word, and I know this is not a tickle me ears. This is not a tickle me Elmo. This is time for us to wake up and change. Who would have thought that on Sunday morning you would come in, and it would be a day that your life would change forever. We just need one word, and God can change your life for good. Just one word. Tonight, you're going to hear from three men who have been tested and tried in battle. You're going to hear from men of God who have been through this, who have wanted it so badly, they fought through every obstacle and warfare and storm to get to where they're at. And they're taking time out of their busy schedules to invest and pour that out into you. How bad do you want that? I want it. I'm going to be there just for that reason. If I could just get one word, if I could even just get one nugget, if I can just get one thing to stand on, I know my life is going to change forever. How many believe that can happen? It could just take one word. She recognized her opportunity. She thought to herself, if I can touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately, The bleeding stopped, and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. We got to recognize the opportunity when it comes. The opportunity has a window. The windows, they come and they go. You either see it and you catch it, or you see it and wave goodbye. God warned me one day, one night in a dream. I don't know if it was a warning. I don't know what it was, but I woke up with my heart beating fast. I woke up from a dream where in the dream, I was presented with an opportunity, a God opportunity, but I treated it so relaxed. I said, uh... There'll be another one. I'll see another window come by, I'm sure. Not right now. I'm a little busy. In the dream, and I've told this before, some of you know it, I was at a train station. And at the train station, you guys know how it is, at the edge of the, of the walkway is where you walk in the train, and the train pulls up on a ledge just like the stage. 
And there was hundreds of people standing on this ledge, just facing, at attention, waiting for the train to come. Hundreds of people. Station was full. Everyone was there. But I was sitting off to the back. Oh, here we go, Christian, over here. I'm sitting over here in the back, and I got my phone out, I got my, my computer out, I got my journal out, I got my iPad, I'm just like, I'm taking notes, I'm reading, got my Bible out, I'm studying, oh, it looks like I'm busy, it looks like I'm doing a lot, it looks like I'm getting things done, I'm, I'm over here busy, I'm too busy to wait in line. Someone in the line looks back at me and says, Christian, get ready, the train is coming. And I said, I'll be right there. But I go right back to my own busy schedule. Because I have things to do, obviously. I go back to what I need to do. I, I, I go back to my computer, I go back to my journal, I go back to my things. I go back to being too busy to see that there's an opportunity right in front of my eyes. So she looks at me again as the train pulls up and she says, Christian, the train is here, let's go. I said, all right. I start packing my bag, I put everything together and I think I'm making it. But in reality, I was out of position and I missed the opportunity because I was not in the right place. As I'm running to the front, those hundreds of people, every last one of them are already on the train. The doors are closing. I'm running to the front, trying to pry the doors open, but the train takes off and I miss it. I wake up immediately. God begins to speak to me and he tells me, just because you're around it, just, it doesn't mean you're in position. You need to get in position, son. You need to see the opportunity when it's there. When I present something before you, it's not for the next person next to you. It's not for the person behind you. It's for you. And someone needs to receive a word from God and say, this one is for me. I need to not waste any more time. I need to not waste a God opportunity. I need to be in position. When God says go, I go. When God says move, I move. When God says speak, I speak. When God says run, I run. But no longer am I going to miss an opportunity when God puts it in front of me because God can do in your life what you can never do. I can't imagine what would happen in that dream if I had just jumped on the train, if I had been in position. Just think how fast and how far I'd be if I was on the train, but I missed it, I missed the opportunity, I missed the chance, I missed the window. Once you miss the window, it's gone. Don't miss your window. Don't miss your God opportunity. When God says move, move. When God says today is a day of salvation, that means today's a day. Don't gamble your eternity away. Don't pretend like you have forever to play with God. Give your life to Jesus today and let him have your heart. Surrender to him. It's today. I hope I'm talking to somebody in here this morning. Recognize your opportunity. We gotta understand the importance of seizing the right moment. We're in a season, church. God is outpouring an impartation of wisdom and leadership into all of our lives for, a, for such a time as this. How many know we're living right now in a day and age in our country and in our world where there is no godly leadership stepping up to lead the charge? And we need to pray for our leaders, but the reality is no one is gonna lead like the church. And it's time for us to rise up and recognize we can't depend on the government to lead our families. We can't depend on our, our schools to teach our kids. We have to be the ones to step up and raise our babies on the way that they should go and teach them that God, Jesus is the way. We're in that season. We're in a time where we need leaders, and God is releasing. It's like I could see him like a giant, like a giant. I'm just seeing it now. Uh, a, just a, man, I don't even know what to call that. A huge bowl, <laughs> just put it that way. Just outpouring upon us, and those that are standing underneath it will receive it. Anybody ever been to Raging Waters or something like that? 
You know what I'm talking about already. You know that little water park area, that little bowl starts to fill up with water and all the kids run under it and every five minutes it gets so full that it just begins to pour out. I used to be the kid, I used to want to be in there, but I had ADD, so I would, I would wait for two seconds and it'd be too long for me. So I'd go running around and playing at all the other little things and by the time I look back, that thing's already pouring out, all the kids are laughing, ha ha, mommy, this is so fun. And I'm jealous because I got distracted and I did not, I wasn't underneath it. I saw it, but I missed it. This is what I'm seeing right now. It's like God has this and he's been filling it and he's been filling it and he's been filling it and tonight he's filling it up and he's getting ready to release an impartation of leadership in all of our lives and you can either watch somebody get showered and dunked in wisdom and anointing and next levels or you can be in it yourself. I'd rather be in it myself than just watch somebody do it. How many are with me on that? Come on, how many are standing with me on that? Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time, someone say proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. That giant bowl, that bucket, whatever that thing is, there's a time it's released. There's a proper time that these are released. God is beginning to release it. But we need to be ready for it. That word time, right here in the scripture, it comes from the Greek word Cairo. Someone say Cairo. And the Cairo word means a defining moment. A defining moment, the opportune time. There's moments in your life that are defining for you. There's seasons that you and bridges you cross over that are defining for your life, not just your life, but get this your kids' lives and your grandkids' lives and generations to come. There are moments that are defining for you and for others around you. I hope you're getting this this morning because when you recognize and you see those defining moments and you capitalize on it, your whole legacy can shift in one moment. It may not look like it now, but you can go from going in this direction to this direction. It may not seem like a lot now, but in 10 years from now, you can either be 10 miles to the left or 10 miles to the right. And in 20 years from now, you can either be 100 miles off course or 100 miles down the right course. It can take one defining moment to change that all. Don't miss your moment. God is saying at the proper time, at the kairos moment, at the opportune time, at the defining moment, I will release a harvest if you don't give up. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Get in position. Get on the train. Get under the bucket. Get ready for what God's getting to release in your life and in your family and in generations to come. I want someone to just lift their hands in this moment and say, God, I receive every word that you have for me. I will not miss my moment. My time is now. I'm stepping in to all that you have for me. Release it, God. I'm ready. Release it. Give God some praise in this moment. I'm still on my first point. I'm busting a Pastor Marco this morning. Um, I don't think I'm gonna make it through these notes, but let's go to point number two. And we'll go through these quickly, so don't rush out of here. Danny's gonna still be open. Know what you want. Someone say, know what you want. Have you seen that meme, the notebook meme? But the guy's like, what do you want? That's what God is doing to us sometimes. He's saying, what do you want? You got to know what you want. We have to show up with some level of expectation if we're getting ready to see some breakthrough in our life. That woman with the issue of blood, she knew exactly what she wanted. She wanted some healing. She invested everything. That's how badly she wanted her healing. And she would stop at nothing to receive her healing. She didn't want to cope with it. She didn't want just a, a Band-Aid. She wanted something that was going to completely heal her. And that person was Jesus Christ. She wanted Jesus. How many want Jesus in this place? We got to know what we want. We got to come expecting. 
See, when somebody actually succeeds, all these successful people we're going to hear from tonight, all these people that have achieved so much and, and done so much in their life, the only reason they can be even qualified or identified as someone that is, quote unquote, successful is for this reason here. They had a goal and they achieved the goal. You cannot be successful without either one of those two elements. You need to identify the goal and achieve the goal. A successful person cannot just achieve something that he's never identified. A successful person is somebody that says, I'm going to get there and then gets there. A successful person that says, we're going to build this machine and they build the machine. That's when someone can say, I've succeeded. The question is, where is it that we're going? What do you want? What's your goal? What's your vision? There's a man in scripture, this is the second story. He's a blind beggar, his name is Bartimaeus. And Jesus asks him face to face, he says, what do you want me to do for you? Uh, hello, I can't see, I'm blind. But Jesus was making a point here. He was saying, I need you to be very clear about your expectation. What exactly do you want me to do for you? I wonder if Jesus sat you down and had a press conference or a, a, a mentorship meeting one-on-one -on -one with you and he asked you that one question. He says, what exactly do you want me to do for you? Are we gonna go, uh, duh, Jesus, I'm blind. Or Jesus, you know what I need. How many have prayed those prayers before? I have, I'm guilty of that. God, uh, uh, you know what I need, you know. You know what's up. But what God is saying is we need to be clear about our expectation. What exactly do you want Jesus to do for you? Look in the scripture, it's in Mark chapter 10, starting from verse 46, Bartimaeus goes on the road, he hears Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, and he starts shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And here come the crowd. Here come the naysayers again. See, it's funny. Every time you're getting ready to break through to the next level, the enemy starts to creep in with people that know how to trigger you and discourage you and speak death over you. The enemy knows who to use in your life. Use people to say something that's going to get you so mad. You just want to go backwards. You don't want to just, ooh. And here we go. Here we go again. These naysayers come by. Verse 48. They tell this blind beggar, be quiet. Jesus got, don't got time for you. Blind beggar. Be quiet. Many of the people were yelling at him. Be quiet. Yelling. Tell, yeah, telling someone to be quiet by yelling. Okay, that's good. That's a good way to tell someone to be quiet. But he only shouted louder. He said, son of David, have mercy on me. He's crying out. He wants it bad. He wants to see. He wants his breakthrough. He knows exactly what he wants. And Jesus comes. He says, when Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, tell him to come here. Tell that man over there, tell him to come here. So they called the blind man. I'm sure they're probably petty about it too. They're like, he wants you. They tell him, cheer up. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, cheer up. Get happy. He wants you, they said. Come on. He's calling you. Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. How crazy is this? How insensitive, actually. That, that they would tell him, come to Jesus. And some might even think, how insensitive of Jesus to tell a blind guy, come to me. He's blind, he can't see. You would think Jesus would go, hang on, hold that man right there. I'm coming to you, can you hear me? I'm right here. Grab him and, and show him that he's there. But Jesus tells him, come to me. And the blind people, I mean the blind people, the crowd, they were blind spiritually. That was the little nugget there. 
the crowd, they said, come on, he's calling you. Bartimaeus himself throws his coat aside, jumps up, and comes to Jesus, a blind man. The faith of this man to walk and to do something, to walk as if he can see the reason why he was able to walk is, is because he had a vision that he would be able to see. See, some of us can see with our two eyes, but we're going absolutely nowhere because we have no vision of where we're going to go. This blind man, maybe he couldn't see with his two eyes, but he had a vision of where he wanted to go. He could see himself seen with his two eyes. He could see himself walking with vision and with sight. He could see himself being able to move freely and no longer having to beg on the side of the road. He had vision for his life, so he was able to move in faith. I wonder how many of us have vision for our life. And even though you may not have it in you now, you got vision for it. So you're ready to move. You're getting ready to get up. You're throwing off the mat. You're throwing off the old coat. You're throwing off the old you. And you're jumping in to all that God has for you. And you're saying, I don't care that I'll have it now. I can see myself with it. I can see myself walking in breakthrough. I can see my family serving the Lord. I can see my business thriving. I can see my body walking and healing. I can see my son at this altar praising and worshiping you. I can see my brother here worshiping alongside me. I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. I may not have it now, but I can see it. And I'm walking towards it. Jesus, I'm coming. Jesus, I'm coming. I can see it. Come on, how many can see your breakthrough today? How many of you can see the future? How many of you can see the life that God has for you? I wish I had a few more people in here that were excited about what God had for you and your future. Give God some praise this morning. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. What do you want? What exactly do you want me to do for you? Where exactly do you want to be five years from today? Are you, right now, where you wanted to be? If you could rewind your life five, even 10 years, are you exactly where you've wanted to be? I know that's a heavy loaded question, but right now we're in an opportune time. We're in a Kairos moment. You have a chance right now. It doesn't matter what the past looked like. Doesn't matter what happened three years ago. Doesn't, I'll even, I'll go as far as this. Doesn't even matter what happened last night or this morning. You're in a Kairos moment. You're in an opportune time to shift and to change the direction of the next five, 10, 20 years of your life. Are you ready to change what's to come? How bad do you want that? Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man says, my rabbi, my teacher, my mentor, my disciple maker, the one who pours into me, the one who teaches me the way to go, my rabbi, he says this. Love that. makes it personal to him. He doesn't say the rabbi. He doesn't just call him rabbi. He says, my rabbi, my teacher, my Lord. The blind man said, I want to see. I want to see so bad. I just want to see with my two eyes. Man, I could just feel that in the spirit right now. 
I just feel right now there's someone in here that just wants to see again. Maybe you've told God, maybe you feel this way, God, I, I can't feel you anymore. I don't remember the last time I really truly felt your presence. I don't know where I'm going in life. I used to have vision, I used to be on fire, I used to be excited, now I'm going through the motions. But I wanna see. Maybe you've heard of this, maybe you've heard of people being on fire for God and whatever that could mean. Maybe you've seen people smiling and with peace and you don't know how someone could be smiling right now with everything you're going through. You're saying, I just, I wanna have peace. I want to smile. I want rest. I want freedom. Maybe you can't, you can't go a day without your addiction calling you and banging on the door. You're just telling God, my rabbi, I just want to be free. I just want to be healed from my, the pain in my body. I want to be healed from the sickness I want to be healed from this cancer. I, I, I just, God, I need it. My rabbi, I want to see. And Jesus will respond just like he did this man without hesitation. He says to him, go, for your faith has healed you. And instantly the man could see. And he followed Jesus down the road. This is your moment. This is your time right now. Are you that woman? Are you that man that wants it bad enough that you're willing to give everything at the feet of Jesus, at the altar of God? That you're willing to push through the crowd? That you're willing to shout even louder, even though people say, be quiet, sit down. How bad do you want your change? How bad do you want to see? How bad do you want to be healed? How bad do you want to be forgiven and set free? How bad do you want breakthrough and the chains broken of depression and suicide off of your mind and off of your life? How bad do you want to get through one night's sleep without tremors and, and, and torturing of demons? How bad do you want to get set free and to be healed? How bad do you want it? God is saying right now is that moment for you. I want to ask you, and this is a question for everybody in this room, from the front row to the back row, this question is for you. If you want change in your life, if you're ready for breakthrough, if you're ready to see God heal you and do a new thing in your life, and if you want it badly enough, then when I count to three, I just want you to raise your hand in this room from the front row all the way to the back. One, two, three, just raise your hand. Just raise your hands, just raise your hands. Look at all these hands, guys. Look at all these hands. Look at all these hands. I want it bad. I want change. I want breakthrough. I want healing. I want salvation. I want freedom. I want life. Can you do me a favor? I'm not going to ask you to say something on the mic. I'm not going to do anything to embarrass you. But at, could you do me a favor? If you raise your hand, could you just stand to your feet in this moment? Could you just stand up and just assemble? You're saying, I'm willing to change something today. I'm willing to do something different. Come on, can we give them a round of applause, those that are standing? Let's all stand with them right now. Let's all stand with them. Everybody, let's stand with them. And we're going to do one more thing. For those that stood up, I want you to do something very bold in this moment. I want you to do something like this woman did and this blind beggar did, Bartimaeus. They both came to Jesus. Right now is your come to Jesus moment. Right now is your time to come to the altar and surrender. Those that raise your hand, I want you to make your way out of your seat. And I want you to come up to the front. Come to the altar and get ready to surrender everything. Right now, church, right now is the time where we clap, we roar, we give them an ovation. We get excited. Come on, church. Let's clap for every person. This break can change right now. Come on, let's sing that out.
altar workers. Before we start praying, just want to make one more call, and, and you may have already come up, but you're saying, I want to give my life completely to Jesus, and that's probably why you're up here already, but maybe there's someone else that needs to be up here. You're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to surrender everything. This is the truth. This is a scary truth. The Bible says that we've all fallen short of the mark, which means we've all sinned. And sinned, sin is missing the mark. God, God's standard is holy and perfect. And if you're not perfect, that means you missed the mark. That's all of us, because none of us are perfect. The Bible also goes on to say that the price or the wage or the debt that you owe now because of that sin is death. That's eternal separation from God. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm gonna die one day because I've sinned? It's only a small part of it. The truth is this. Because of my sin, the only way I can personally pay that debt is by eternally being separated from God's presence. And there's a, na there's a name for that place, it's called hell. That's the bad news, guys. But there's good news. The good news is that God so loved you, the world, sinners, people that were doomed to hell. God so loved you that he gave his only son so that whoever would believe in him would not perish, would not inherit death, would not be eternally separated from God. But they would receive everlasting life. This is the good news. This is God's promise to you. You don't have to pay that debt anymore because Jesus intentionally came and lived on this earth, gave himself on the cross and resurrected from the dead so that you can be forgiven and washed clean completely from your debt. That's something only Jesus could do. Now, who needs that? Everybody. Oh, but I'm a pretty good person. I don't murder. I don't lie. I don't steal. Are you perfect? Mm. Are, are, you, are, you, are you Jesus perfect? That's really the standard. If you're Jesus perfect, you're good. You don't need the cross. You're fine. But if you're not Jesus perfect, this good news is for you. You need Jesus. If today you want to give your life to Jesus completely, if you want to be forgiven of your sin, if you want to know that if you were to die today, you wouldn't be doomed to hell and separation from God forever, but you would spend eternity with God in heaven forever and ever, not because of how good you were trying to be, but, but, but because of how good God is and how good Jesus was and because of the sacrifice that he made and because you put your faith in him and you've repented of your, your old sins, you're turning away and you wanna give your life to him. If that's you, you wanna get saved, you wanna be forgiven, then I want you at the count of three to raise your hand. One, two, three. You raise your hand. You're saying, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I see you. I see all those that are up here already. Anybody else? I see you over there. For those that just raised your hand, can you come up here really quick? We want to pray for you too. Those that just raised your hand, come on up. Come on up and join us up here at the front. We're going to pray with you. We need more altar workers up here as well. If you're a leader, a DG leader, come on up here. We need you. We need you. Let's do this. We're going to pray. For those that are up here, we have a class for you. It's called Starting at the Way. This class is designed to teach you, train you and equip you to make the steps necessary to start your growth walk with God. You're up here today because you're ready for change. But remember, change does not come without some investment. I know you're coming up here and this is a Kairos moment. This is a defining moment for you and that's good. But there's also a such thing as staying in the fight. And the only way to stay in the fight, you gotta go through some basic training. That's what we're gonna help you to do. You're going into a war. As a matter of fact, you're already in a war. We're gonna teach you how to win that war. You're gonna teach you how to be on the winning side. You're on the winning side. We're gonna train you how to go to battle. And you're not only gonna be able to fight for you, but you're gonna be able to fight for your family now. How many know that's what we need? Starting at the way, we're gonna train you. 
The person in front of you, they're gonna pray with you. If you're ready to sign up for the class, we got some books for you. Let me see one of those. We got a book for you. This is a journal. This is a 15-day devotional. 15-day devotional. And it's gonna get you through your beginning steps on how to walk with God, how to grow, how to understand what God is saying about salvation, who Jesus is in your life, all of that. It's all in here. And you're gonna, you're, you're gonna get signed up for this class. The person in front of you, sign up for that class and they'll get you a book. We need tons more leaders. I don't know if we got any more leaders out there. If you're just a, a, a super volunteer leader, come up. If you, I mean, we need some help. We really need you. Let's pray right now. Everyone bow your head and close your eyes. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, thank you for calling me to you. Thank you, Jesus. I want to see. I want to be healed. I want to be forgiven. I put all my faith in you, Jesus. I surrender completely. And I give it all at your feet. I repent of my old ways. And I turn to you. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me. Give me a new future. I can see it now. Give me vision of a new beginning, of a new start. Give me strength to walk this walk out and to fight this fight. I'm on the winning side. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and setting me free. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Let's give him praise, church. Come on, let's give him praise. He's good God. Now, hang on one sec. Last thing I'll say, and I'll let you go. Don't miss your opportunity time to get what you can get tonight. It could change your life forever. Come to Lead Night. More information for you in the foyer or jump on the Wayworld Outreach app. If you don't have the app, download it. The information's there. You can just click it. Be there tonight. We have a few tickets left. We want to see you there. We love you. If you need prayer coming up, we'd love to pray with you.